Let's revise 10th Standard ICSE Physics Chapter 2 Work, Energy and Power Section A is about work, energy and power's definitions and their measurements. In physics, work is said to be done when a force is applied and it produces a displacement. So if I apply immense force on this board but there is no displacement, in physics terms, no work is done. I may perspire, I'm losing a lot of energy, calories are being burnt, but no work is done because there is no transfer of energy to the board. Now the formula for work is force into displacement in the direction of force. Now let's consider a few scenarios. Imagine that a force is being applied horizontally to push this object along this slope which is at an angle of theta with the horizontal direction, that is the direction of the force. Let the displacement be S, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle. But when we calculate work, it's force multiplied by displacement in the direction of force, which means if the force was, let's say, 10 Newton and the displacement is um, 5 meters, we cannot say that the work done is 10 into 5, 50 Newton meter or 50 Joule because we need the displacement in the direction of force, which is this. And clearly this will be smaller than five meters and the work done will be less than 50 Joule. So how do we calculate this displacement? Well, we use trigonometry. Since this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse, we can use cos here. Cos theta is equal to, let's call this AB is adjacent upon hypotenuse that is AB upon AC therefore AB is equal to AC into cos theta and AC is S the displacement S cos theta so AB is actually S cos theta which will be less than 5 meters let's say it is uh, 4 meters so the formula actually is F into S cos theta so here if AB is 4 meters then the total work done is 10 into 4 40 Joule. If the direction of force and displacement is the same, then theta is 0 and cos 0 is 1. So the formula is the usual W is equal to F into S. But if the directions are different, then we need to take cos theta into account. Let's consider one more example. In a circular motion like that of the revolution of the moon around the earth, at every point, the displacement is said to be along the tangent at that point and the force acting the centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force of the earth so the angle between the force and the displacement is 90 now cos 90 is 0 and anything multiplied by 0 is 0 so the work done by the gravitational force of earth is 0 one more example is what if an object is thrown upwards the displacement is the height. In this case, the muscular force is acting upwards and the displacement is also upwards, so the work done by us is positive, which is uh, calculated by using the formula F into S. But the question is, what is the work done by gravity out here? Now here, the gravitational force was acting downwards and yet the object moved upwards. So the angle between them is 180 degrees and cos of 180 is equal to minus 1 so that is negative work. So the negative work is done by gravity here. And that is why the object slows down as it moves up. There is retardation because the gravitational force is doing negative work in this case. So these are the three scenarios we need to keep in mind. Next, let's talk about the work done by gravitational force and derive a formula for that. So here we see an object with mass m is being lifted to a height h. The force applied by us in overcoming gravity is equal to the weight of the object, which is given as m into g. Weight is always mass into acceleration due to gravity. And the displacement out here is h. So the work done by us is mgh. But the work done by gravity here is minus mgh because gravity will do negative work. You see, gravitational force is acting downwards and the displacement is upwards. So what is the work done by the Earth's gravitational force? minus mgh. And what is the work done by us? mgh. This work is stored in the object as potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So when we release it, 
it can use it and convert it into kinetic energy to fall down. So potential energy is also equal to mgh. You see, energy is the capacity to do work. So they're equivalent. Hence, their units are also same, joule. Now, if a coolie, that is a porter, has uh, lifted a luggage to a height, he has done positive work because there is displacement of the luggage. But if it's already on his head and he moves along a horizontal platform, then he's not doing any work against gravity. You see, the gravitational force acts downwards, vertically downwards, and the displacement of the luggage and the porter is along the horizontal line. So the angle between them is 90, and whenever the direction of uh, displacement is perpendicular to the direction of force, the work done by that force is zero. So the work done against gravity is zero. But we can't say that the porter has not done any work. Don't try this with the porter. He has done work, but he has done work against friction. So while he was walking, there was another force in play, which is the frictional force between his shoes and the platform. Frictional force is always a resistive force. It is always in a direction opposite to the direction of motion. So he has to do work to overcome it. So he has done work against friction, but he has not done work against gravity. What if the platform was frictionless? Then we can say he has not done any work. In fact, he won't have to exert any energy in a, on a frictionless surface. But that is not possible because friction is always present. If the porter was climbing up a slope, then he is doing work even against gravity. Next, we talk about the units of work, which will be the units of energy as well. Now, one joule of work is said to be done when a force of one newton produces a displacement of one meter in the direction of force. Another unit of energy and work is erg. Now, one newton, <coughs> I'm sorry, one joule is equal to one newton into one meter. Let's convert it into CGS units. One newton is 10 raised to 5 dyne, and this is 10 raised to 2 centimeters, so that's totally 10 raised to 7 dyne centimeter, which comes up to 10 raised to 7 erg. So we need to know this derivation. <clears throat> now there's another concept of power. Now imagine there are two people, person A and person B. Uh, both have the same weight, and both of them have to climb 20 floors of a building. Person A climbs to the top in 5 minutes, whereas person B takes 15 minutes. Who has done more work here? Well, both of them have done the same work because the force applied by both is same since their weight is same. Let's say 50 Newton, 500 Newton each. And the displacement is also same because both of them have climbed 20 floors. So the work done by, the, by both of them is the same. However, since A has done the work in smaller interval of time, we say that he has exerted more power. So power is equal to work upon time. The faster you do work, the more power is exerted. The units are joule per second, which is also called watt. Kilowatt is 1000 watt. Now there is another formula for power. We said that power is equal to work upon time, but work is F into S, and displacement upon time is nothing but velocity. So here we have another derived formula for power. The SI unit is watt. There are some smaller units like milliwatts and microwatt. Milliwatt will be 10 raised to minus 3 watt. Microwatt will be 10 raised to minus 6 watt. Now there is one industrial unit of watt called horsepower. It is used in mechanical engineering. For example, to measure the power of the engine of vehicles like cars, they use horsepower. And the conversion has to be remembered. One horsepower is equal to 746 watt. And finally, let's understand more units of energy. Now, energy, like work, is a scalar quantity. They don't have any direction. Even though force and displacement are vector quantities, but work and energy are scalar. The SI unit is joule. We have some other units. For example, now, I just said that power is equal to work upon time. So if I cross multiply it, I will get work is equal to power into time. That is watt into second. That is one joule. But we need a bigger unit to measure electrical energy. So let's take time in hours. That will be watt hour. And even bigger unit would be kilowatt hour. That is 1000 watt multiplied by one hour. So this is another unit of energy, kilowatt hour, which is equivalent to 
3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule, more than a million joule, 1 kilowatt hour. So your electricity bills have units consumed mentioned and those units are measured in kilowatt hour. Joules are not used because then it will be a very big number which might uh, worry, when, worry you when you pay the bill. So 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule. Uh, another unit is calorie. It is used especially to measure heat energy. The SI unit is same, joule, for all types of energy. But for heat energy, we can use calorie for certain calculations. One calorie is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. That is to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius, how much heat is required. And we have taken the standard temperatures as 14.5 and 15.5 because for any other temperature, the amount of heat is not exactly the same. Next, another unit is electron volt. You must have studied this in chemistry. It is a very small unit of energy used to measure the energy of subatomic particles like electrons. And it is defined as the amount of energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated through a potential difference of 1 volt. And the conversion of 1 electron volt is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule. This number reminds you of the charge of an electron as well. Then standard physics chapter 2 part A. Work, energy and power and their measurements and units. Cancel the first paragraph. Now in physics work is said to be done only when the force applied on a body makes the body move. So if there is no movement, no matter how much effort you are applying, you are not doing any work. So right now, you watching this video amounts to no work. So kindly keep moving. Measurement of work. Cancel this paragraph. The formula is work is equal to force into displacement in the direction of the force. That is W is equal to F into S. Note that though force and displacement are vector quantities, Work is a scalar quantity. Cancel this paragraph. Now, the actual expression for work is Fs cos theta. Because if the displacement is not in the direction of the force, then we have to count only the component of the displacement in the direction of force. So here you can see force is acting horizontally. But since the slope exists, this object will be displaced at an angle theta from the horizontal. So at every point, we are applying horizontal force on the object till the time it reaches the top. Since the displacement is not in the direction of the force, we use trigonometry to find out the displacement in the direction of force till point B, which is vertically below the actual point C. Obviously, A B, that is the displacement in the direction of force, will be less than the actual displacement, which is A C. And this is given as S cos theta. If the hypotenuse is S, then the base of a right angle triangle is S cos theta. So now the total work done is F into S cos theta. And that's how it is derived. The second case is cancelled entirely. Cancel this as well. Now the special cases. If the displacement is in the direction of the force, for example, a free fall, gravity is acting downwards, motion is always also downwards then cos 0 is 1. So the equation now changes to the usual W is equal to F into S. This is an example of positive work. Case 2. When the displacement is perpendicular or normal to the direction of the force, then theta is 90, cos 90 is 0, so work is also 0. Example, when a coolie walks on a horizontal ground while carrying a load on his head. Notice that gravity is acting downwards, but he is walking horizontally. So the motion is perpendicular to the force of gravity. So we see the coolie is not doing any work against the force of gravity. By the way, you should still pay him because he is doing work against friction. Another point, another example, circular motion, mark it as a GR. So imagine this is the moon revolving around the earth. So at every point, there is a centripetal force due to gravity acting inwards towards the center. That is the direction of the force. But at every point, the velocity or the displacement is perpendicular to this force because it is along the tangent at that point. So we say no work is being done by Earth's gravity on the moon. So there is no transfer of energy here. 
so earth is not losing any energy due to the moon's revolution around it another situation where no work is done is when displacement is zero so if it completes one revolution and comes back to the original position total displacement is zero so again the work will be zero case 3 negative work that's when theta is 180 and cos 180 becomes minus 1 example when a ball is thrown upwards now gravity was acting downwards but the motion is upwards so the work done by you will be positive but the work done by the gravitational force will be negative because the direction of the force is opposite to motion and this negative work is stored in it as gravitational potential energy which is equal to mgh mgh the note is entirely cancelled but how did we get this expression mgh well work is force into displacement the force acting is nothing but the weight which is mg and the displacement is the height to which it was raised so that is, that is h or the height through which it falls so that's how work is mgh or the potential energy is mgh units of work SI unit is joule which is equal to the work done when a force of 1 newton produces a displacement of 1 meter in the object in the direction of the force. There are bigger joules, bigger units like kilojoule, megajoule, gigajoule and smaller units like erg that is a CGS unit. One erg is a work done when one dyno of force displaces an object by 1 centimeter in the direction of the force. The relationship is derived like this 1 joule is 10 raised to 7 erg. Now power. The rate of doing work is power. For example, a person takes the stairs and reaches the terrace of a building. Another person of equal weight takes the elevator and reaches the terrace of the building. Now the work done in both the cases is the same because work is equal to force into displacement. The force is a gravitational force. I mentioned their weights are equal, so the force is also equal. And displacement is nothing but the height of the tower. It doesn't really matter what the path, what is the path taken by each. What matters is the initial and final position, which is the same in this, this case. So the work done is same. However, the person who taking the elevator used less time. So the power exerted in that case. And of course, the power is exerted by the elevator, not the person. But the power exerted is more. So though the work is same, the power is are different because power is work upon time. The faster you do the work, the more is the power exerted. And the SI unit is joule per second, that is watt. Note that like work and energy, power is also a scalar quantity. It has no direction mathematically. There is another derivation. If work is forced into displacement, and that is substituted in this formula, we know that displacement upon time is velocity. So now we have a new formula. Power is force into velocity. There are some bigger units of power like kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt, and smaller units like milliwatt and microwatt. Relationship between watt and erg per second is that 1 watt is equal to 10 raised to 7 erg per second. Another unit we need to remember which is used in mechanical engineering is 1 HP horsepower which is equal to 746 watt. The difference between work and power. Well, work definition and power definition is one point. Another point is that work done does not depend on time but power does depend on time. Another point of difference is SI unit, which is joule and watt. Energy is the capacity of a body to do work. That is why the unit is the same, which is joule. Now some more units. Watt hour. Well, work is equal to power into time by cross multiplying the previous formula. So energy can also be powered into time. If I take the unit of power as watt, and time is hour. So what hour is the unit of energy? Notice that it's capital W and small h. The relationship with the SI unit is that one watt hour is 3.6 kilojoule and one kilowatt hour is 3.6 megajoule. It is defined as the energy spent or work done by a power of one kilowatt in one hour. And the relationship is that one kilowatt hour is 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule. This is the conversion. Kilowatt hour is a very useful unit. It is used to calculate the amount of electrical energy used in a household. 
in fact the electricity bill that we get is based on kilowatt hour the number of units used in a household into the rate gives us the total bill calories yet another unit used for measuring heat energy this is the definition of one calorie the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree celsius that is from 14.5 to 15.5 is called one calorie it is equal to 4.1 in joule notice the reverse conversion as well kilocalorie is a bigger unit next unit used in particle physics sorry, to measure atomic particles like atoms and even electrons it is electron volt which is defined as the energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated through a potential difference of 1 volt and it is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule which is the charge of one electron in coulomb difference between energy and power the definition it doesn't depend on time it does and the si units hi students this is aj sir if you like this video press the like button if you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures email me or message me on instagram check the description for more information